Okay, this is Science Unit 3, Video Homework 3 over Metals, Nonmetals, and Metalloids. Physical Properties Physical properties are properties that can be measured or observed without changing the composition of a substance. Okay, you already know that you use your five senses to observe physical properties. You use your sense of smell, sight, hearing, touch, or sometimes taste. Alright, so look at your homework paper. This is number one about physical properties, and this is number two about your five senses. Anytime you see a number here on the video, look on your paper. That number is going to be on your paper too, and there's something there that you need to write down. All right. Also, physical properties help us identify matter by differentiating one type of matter from another. For example, how does the matter look? What's its color and what's its luster? Different matter has different colors or different lusters. See, this one's shiny. These are dull. All right. There's number three for your uh, homework paper. All right. Physical properties help us identify matter by differentiating one type of matter from another. Differentiating means telling the difference between them. So, like, for example, how does the matter feel? It may be rough, smooth, maybe it's soft, maybe it's coarse. Okay. These aren't on your homework paper. We're just talking about physical properties. All right. These aren't on your paper either. How does the matter behave? Does it bend easily like this wire? Or does it break easily? Can it be stretched, pulled, or hammered into thin sheets like this aluminum foil? Does it conduct electricity? Okay, these how the matter behaves is another way we can we can distinguish between types of matter with physical properties. Alright. The physical properties that we will use to classify elements are luster. We already learned about that one when we talked about minerals. It's how shiny or dull something is. Malleability, we'll learn about this one. And conductivity, we'll learn about that one today. This is number four, physical properties that we use to classify elements. Here they are. All right, luster. This is number five on your paper. Luster is how shiny or dull an element is. Elements have two types of luster. They're either going to be metallic, which means they look shiny like metal, like these coins right here. Or they're non-metallic, which means they look dull, kind of like dried mud. Okay, that's number five on your homework. All right, malleability. This is a new one. We haven't heard about this one yet. Malleability. Malleability is the ability of an element to bend or be shaped into thin sheets. So elements are either malleable, meaning they can be bent, like this wire right here. This element was malleable, and so it could be bent into this wire and shaped. All right, or elements are brittle. Brittle means it breaks easily or shatters easily, kind of like this glass right here. If something breaks or crushes or shatters, it's brittle. It's not malleable. Okay, if it's malleable, it means it can be bent or shaped. All right, that's number six on your paper. All right, conductivity. Here's another one. You may know, you may have heard of this one before. Conductivity is the ability to conduct electricity. All right. <clears throat> Elements are either conductors, which means they can conduct electricity. They're insulators, meaning they do not conduct electricity. Or sometimes we have semiconductors, meaning they partially conduct electricity. All right, so conductivity is either conductor, insulator, or semiconductor. And that's number seven on your homework. All right, number eight. Based on the physical properties of luster, malleability, and conductivity, we classify elements into three categories. So on the peri periodic table, elements are either metals, nonmetals, or metalloids. And we're about to talk about the properties of these different kinds of elements. Okay. Number nine. Most of the elements on the periodic table are metals. Metals have the following properties. Okay. And I put this picture here because this bridge is obviously made out of metal. All right. <clears throat> Number ten. Metals have metallic luster. That means the metals are usually shiny and bright, like this gold bar, 
like this motorcycle engine. You see how these are shiny and bright? Those are metals because they have metallic luster. Right? Metals are also malleable. That means they can be bent or hammered into thin sheets. Okay? Like this screw right here got bent because it's made out of metal. It's malleable. Or this uh, sheet of metal right here, like, like the tin off of a roof. Okay? Metals are malleable and they can be hammered into thin sheets or they can be bent like this nail. I mean this uh, screw. All right? Metals are also conductors. They're great conductors of electricity and also heat. That's why we use metals for electrical wires. Like this extension cord inside this plastic cord is a metal wire. And here is a bunch of electric wires. Uh, above a street. Okay, we use metal for electric wires because they conduct electricity very well. Alright, now let's talk about nonmetals. Nonmetals are elements that have the following properties. Okay, nonmetal non elements have nonmetallic luster, meaning they're dull and not shiny. These are two examples of some nonmetal elements. See how they're kind of dull? They're definitely not shiny. This one looks like it may have a little bit of a glassy luster, but it's not metallic at all. Okay. All right. Nonmetals are also non malleable, okay, meaning they're brittle and they shatter easily instead of bending. Like these little pieces of broken material here, okay. That's a non metal you can tell because it's shattered and broke into like a million little pieces. All right. Nonmetals are also insulators, meaning they do not conduct electricity or heat well. Okay, you might be a little confused. Why did I put this picture of these electric wires? Because those are obviously metals and good conductors. But see these little things right here? These are called insulators because these are what protect the electric pole from conducting the electricity in the wire so you don't get shocked when you touch an electric pole. Okay, they're made out of nonmetals and they're really good insulators. All right. Now let's talk about metalloids. They share some properties of metals and nonmetals. They have the following properties. All right. For luster, some metalloids have metallic luster and some have non-metallic luster. That could be shiny or dull. Okay? Here's an example of a metalloid and here's another example. This one is dull and this one is shiny. Sometimes the element has some of both properties. Okay, so luster for metalloids is either shiny or dull. This is number 16. All right, number 17. Metalloids share some proper. Uh, their metalloids are semiconductors. Okay, that means they're partial or semiconductors of electricity. All right, this is very important property of metalloids. See these computer chips right here? These things that make your computer work? They're made out of semiconductors because sometimes they conduct electricity and sometimes they don't. And in computers, that's very important, meaning they can switch things on and off with semiconductor metals. I mean, semiconductor elements. So it's very important that metalloids are semiconductors. They sometimes conduct electricity and sometimes don't. That's 17. All right, and number 18. Metalloids, um, some are malleable and some are brittle. So they kind of share properties. All right, so that's everything for your homework and for the video. It's just important to remember most of the elements on the periodic table are metals. There's some that are non-metals and they don't have any of the same properties as metals and then the metalloids kind of share properties they're sort of in between alright that's it